Good morning, everyone. Thanks, Steve. That was a pretty awesome introduction. Um, I was getting a bit teary there. <laughs> uh, well, welcome, everyone, again to, um, to the Authorit Summit. Uh, and, and thanks, Steve, for that very, very warm welcome. Looking out at, over at all of you today, and I see a lot of familiar faces. Um, many of our dedicated clients, our very supportive partners, and our fantastic staff, and hopefully some soon-to-be new clients. You know, without all of you guys and our thousands of clients all over the world, none of this would be possible. So thank you all very much for making Author the success it is today. You know, it's, it's taken us a while to, to put this together. I remember, oh God, how many times Steve and I have sat there and said, God, you know what, we should put on a user conference. Yeah, next year we'll do it. And, and it's never happened. And, but the perfect opportunity came through uh, as our friends in the New Zealand government came to us with this opportunity to be involved in the America's Cup to run our very first summit. And I thought, wow, what an amazing opportunity to bring our users here to the heart of San Francisco to watch an event that probably no one has ever seen before and experience not just the, the San Francisco atmosphere, but uh, the atmosphere of an America's Cup racing team. And I hope um, many of you were able to go to the event last night. I do see some of the people that were there and, and went on that base tour and experienced the inner workings of the America's Cup team, had some nice food and wine. And you know what? I, one of the things that amazed me when we're standing next to the wing sail of that America's Cup boat, and a guy points out that this is actually bigger than the biggest commercial aircraft wing in the world. It's bigger than an A380 aircraft wing, which is wow. And it was uh, made of basically honeycomb fiber, which was really interesting. So I enjoyed that, and I hope you guys all had a great time as well. Right. We tried the manual way, shall we? Good so in today's busy world, you know, we often are so busy getting things done and moving around that we just don't take the time to step back and have a look at what we've achieved. It's really important to do that. So I want to take some time today to, to really look back at the beginnings of the company before we look forward at the future. I want to take you all on a little bit of a journey, a little bit of a journey into our past, where we've come, where we are today, and then where we're planning to go in the future. I want to tell you a story. Uh, about a young New Zealand company that wanted to escape the sheep farm and take on the world. And uh, many of you, um, or some of you may have heard this story, many of you haven't, but all of you have been a part of the story. And so, let's, let's have a look. <coughs> you know, I, I clearly remember the, the day I started my first tech writing job, and it didn't take me long to figure out that the tools of the trade were just woefully inadequate for the job. Um, I, I looked around for other tools, but I just couldn't find anything. I've come from an area of discipline in, in a different field in telecommunications where they had proper systems and proper processes. And everything was very well disciplined. And I go into tech writing and I say, oh, here's Word. And, and oh, by the way, I need a help system. Here's uh, some macros at the time called the doctor help. And it was my job to try and put all of this together. And it's like, this was amazing. I managed to get it done eventually, but I had to sacrifice so much of the creativity I'd put into my document that it was just, um, it was painful. So, in typical Kiwi fashion, I decided to go and build some tools for myself to help me do a better job. I had some experience in development, so how hard could it be, right? <laughs> so, after a few years um, of doing this, um, working away, and the work colour comes up behind me. Well, that's pretty good stuff, mate. And in New Zealand terms, that's an awesome compliment. <laughs> oh yeah, it's all right, eh? <laughs> you, know what those, they, you know, the All Blacks win the World Cup, and they go, how was it? Oh, it's, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're, we're, this is high compliment. So I'm thinking, oh yeah, that's good. Um, why not? Let's, uh, let's do this. So I, I took my, my efforts to date and tried to productize them and put them together into something resembling a commercial product, and uh, that took me a few more years. But at the end, I had this product, I had a manual, of course, help system, and, uh, and a website even, and, and a pretty box to put it all in. I, was, um, I remember thinking that as soon as, as soon as I put this up on the website and everything, so I went live at the end date to buy orders. You know, this is back in the days of the dot 
on Bubble and I was going, I'm going to be a millionaire. I was very excited. And finally, I go live and, um, well, the reality was a little bit different, right, from the, from the perception. I think about a week later, I got my first visitor to the website. <laughs> So I figured after that, it says, no, well, building a successful software company is obviously going to take a little bit more effort than just putting a website up. So um, the first year was pretty tough. You know, we, um, I think in the first year, uh, made about $10,000 in sales, Kiwi, which at the time was maybe 4000 US. Right? Luckily, my wife had a good job because I wasn't putting in any money. Um, but I learned a lot. And I made some really, really good friends and good contacts. And in particular, I met a guy named Ray Duncan. I don't know if uh, many of you remember him. He's a grey-haired guy that I used to go around with. And, and he took me under his wing, an older, wiser man. And uh, Ray told me, he said, look, if you want to build a successful software company, you've got to look overseas. The market's just not big enough yet. So, so that's what we did. And the biggest market of all, of course, is America. So we decided to travel to our very first trade show and conference, and that was uh, Winwriters at the time. It's now called Writers UA. Uh, that was a conference in San Diego. And the problem we have is that in New Zealand, the, uh, the impression that we get of American companies is a little distorted because we only see the cream of the crop. And New Zealand's a really small market, so it's just not big enough for most companies to, to bother with. And so the only companies we tend to see there are the big guys like Microsoft, Apple, Oracle, Google, Cisco, IBM. And so our perception, or mine was at the time, that ooh, all American companies are like that. And I remember you know, before this first conference just being so afraid that we would look like a bunch of sheep farmers coming into the city and, and be seen as these backwards folks and the amount of effort I put into, into the the booth that we had together and the presentations and Ray was drilling me every night and making sure that we would do everything just right. Then we packed our bags, jumped on the short 15 hour flight to San Diego and with everything we needed, like literally in our suitcases. Um, and we got to the show and, and the reality was a little different to what we expected. There was pipe and curtain booths and people with handwritten messages up on the booth and sitting behind tables and we were like, we end up having the best booth at the show. <laughs> so we're, we're amazed. But what surprised me the most about this show was the reaction that people, like the vendors and the, the attendees, had to our products. You know, we, we had a topic based, database driven, single source authoring and publishing system, the likes of which no one had ever seen. And people even accused us of faking our demos when we were showing them. And they wouldn't be satisfied that the product was actually doing what we showed them it was doing until we let them drive. And uh, so after that, we're like, well, we must have something a little bit different, a little bit special here. So after that initial success of the conference, trade events suddenly became our major way of market. And for the next five years or so, Ray and I traveled the world, living out of suitcases, hotel rooms, attending every technical communication and localization event in the world. So I attended literally hundreds of events, exhibiting, speaking, meeting with thousands of organizations and I learned so much about our industry and what our clients wanted and that fed so many of our innovations. Um, we had some pretty amazing adventures too, as you do when you're traveling all over the world and uh, I, I could speak about these all day, maybe after a few drinks. <laughs> Uh, so we continued to grow, adding many of the largest companies in the world as clients. Um, we continued to expand our products and innovate to solve our clients' problems. But even with all the success, it became apparent that we're never going to be this great company that we wanted to be if we remained only a New Zealand company. And it was at this point that I decided that we needed to go global. But I needed some more help. You know, one of the greatest strengths I I see in, in myself is my ability to know what my limits are. And so, enter Mr. Steve Davis. <laughs> Steve, Steve had already been there, done that, all of the experience necessary, and so armed with his experience and, and guidance, we were ready to take our next step, our next step on our journey. But where was that going to be?
So we figured we're going to go to the US. <laughs> why, not, why not go somewhere nice, right? So we went down and set up, in early 2008, we set up our first foreign office in Newport Beach, California. And the economy was going gangbusters, we hired a whole heap of new staff, we closed our first million dollar deal, which is, we couldn't, we couldn't do anything wrong, it's just brilliant. And then the economy tanked in uh, late 2008. <laughs> and talk about bad timing, uh, the next few years were just awful for so many of us, for us, for our competitors, for our clients. You know, I, I saw half the technical publication industry end up jobless in that time. So it was a really tough time. And we thought that it was tough for everybody. But one thing that became apparent during this time is that it, most software companies, or almost all of them, were affected by it. But we saw a bunch of them that weren't. And when we investigated this, we found that these companies were software as a service companies. There were companies like Salesforce.com. And we started saying, well, why are these companies not suffering the same as everyone else? And the reason is because their clients could get almost immediate value out of their services with almost no upfront investment. No upfront investment in infrastructure, in big software licenses, in implementation. They could just go in put a credit card up there and start working. And they could start as small as they needed to and then grow as quickly as they wanted to or shrink if time necessary. So short story is there was no penalty and it was very low risk. In a, in a market where everything was high risk, this was low risk. And so we had to rethink a few things and reassess not just our approach but our technology and even where we were located. You know, it's, the reality is that the OC is a, it's a really nice place, but we didn't need to be in Silicon Valley. We needed to be in Silicon Valley. <laughs> <laughs> so, we packed up our bags and moved north. Um, the beaches aren't as good up here, but <laughs> one of the interesting things about Silicon Valley is the energy. Um, doing business from New Zealand feels like a bit like you're swimming against the tide. We've got a very laid-back culture, and so it's, it's just, you know, slow down, man, slow down, not so fast. And so you just, you're trying to get ahead, and you just feel like you're being held back. But up here in the heart of Silicon Valley, it feels like you're whitewater rafting, and you're struggling to keep up with the current. Everything's moving so fast. Everyone here wants to succeed. And the best of all is they all believe they can. And equipped with this kind of energy and determination, we set out to completely transform our company and our technology from this normal on-premises perpetual license company to a full SaaS company. Which is, this is not an easy or simple task, but we managed to achieve it. And now we're the first you know, and only company that delivers and builds their own end-to-end -end component authoring, management, localization, publishing solution, all in a multi-tenant cloud platform. Now this transformation did not only affect our products, but by necessity our service and how we deliver our services too. And you'll be hearing all about that transformation in our services from our uh, Director of Services and Operation, Ralph Vitkin, later today. And so it's a very important part of being a SaaS company is not just the product, but we're now delivering a service. The service, part of which is the technology. And, and all of the people come with that as well. So after a bit of looking around, we moved our uh, offices up to San Jose. And for those of you that are familiar with the area, um, it's just off an area called Santana Road, which is about as close as we could find to the OC. <laughs> so now the office was all set up and the stage, and the next stage was to move ourselves. And at this stage, Steve and I were still living in New Zealand and traveling to the US every few weeks. It's a 12 hour flight, 13 sometimes, depending on the wind. So not only was this a bit of a, a rough commute, but it's, it's hard to build a, a high growth software company when you come up here and you build a whole bunch of momentum for a few weeks and then you have to go back and watch that momentum go. So it felt like we were coming up spinning the wheel, getting all spinning, and then we'd leave for a bit and then uh, spin down again. So we took the decision to move ourselves up here. And Steve moved here mid last year with his family. And I followed towards the end of last year. 
So now we're both US residents, and we both live up and work out of the San Jose office. And uh, who I can tell it's just amazing we've all led into the country these days. <laughs> so, you know, Authorate's always been at the forefront of innovation and bringing that innovation to component authoring and, and content management. But I just want to run through some examples of these innovations. It's, uh, sometimes we forget all that we have achieved. Now, back in 1999, last century, last millennium, more than five years before dinner was even thought of, Authorate introduced the world's first end-to-end component-based <coughs> authoring management solution, including topic-based authoring and multi-output publishing with reuse, all out of the box. You know, in, in 2003, after a lot of research with, with clients, mainly in Europe actually, and localization industry, we introduced component-based localization, which was another world first. This allowed companies to translate the individual pieces of content rather than entire documents, and then only those pieces that had changed or were new. And this has allowed some of our clients to save over 80% of their localization costs, because they're just not sending that information to be translated. Shortly after that, we saw the move to web-based software, and we started investing heavily in building rich web-based authoring interface uh, to enable anywhere, anytime authoring and free companies from having to install software on every desktop. Some of our clients released, have used a lot of that in being able to get teams from all over the world collaborating without having to, to have the desktop software running. We released Author It Live in 2007. Later that year, we added Author It Extend. And Author It Extend was designed to automate reuse. Now, although many of our clients could reuse content, we found that many of them didn't because they still had to plan it and execute it. So Extend was designed to help automate that reuse and bring suggestive reuse to the fingertips of our clients while they're typing. We were awarded a patent for this innovative technology. In 2009, seeing a greater demand for more structured content, um, we introduced structured authoring. But the real innovation here was not structured authoring itself, but making that technology easily accessible by adding an easy to use visual builder that allowed designers and, and authors to build content models without having to learn complex developer technologies like DTDs and XSDs. We also found a way to, in, in this design to separate the structure from the content itself, meaning the content could participate simultaneously in multiple um, different structures which increases the reusability of content. In typical models, once you put content into a structure, it's stuck there. In the same way that content is stuck in, stuck in presentation. So this allowed us to break away from that. In 2010, we we're the first company to deliver genuine dynamic publishing. And this means that customers can come to a knowledge center and get personalized content based on their information and based on what the authors had decided certain audiences needed. From their, uh, from their content. We also introduced APIs and plugin architecture that year, which allowed our clients and third parties to easily extend and integrate um, our platform. In 2011, we released Author Review. That enables component-based, real-time collaborative reviews, incorporates the latest in web-based technology and social, social media as well, which revolutionize the way that reviews happen and turns it into a very collaborative and, uh, and, and fun process and taking out a sort of cumbersome document-based review which most companies have seen. Then last year, after about three years of development and testing and research, we released Author Cloud. And it was the world's first SaaS end-to-end -end component authoring management localization and publishing solution. We followed that up this year with the release of Author It On-Premises 6, and Author It Cloud Enterprise, which includes a brand new localization module and a refined localization process, which you're going to be seeing a bit of that later today as well. Then most recently, we released Author It Cloud Group, which is packed and priced to appeal to smaller groups of authors and give them the opportunity to experience the power of enterprise authoring um, for a lower price point. And this is one of the big advantages of SaaS is that it allows traditionally enterprise class software to be accessible by all levels of organization. Now, Author Cloud is growing very strongly. 
most of our new clients choose all through cloud and many of our existing clients are migrating away from the on-premises solution to all through cloud. We've now got three all through cloud data centers. We've got one in Florida, one in Texas in the US, and our most recent one is in France and in Europe. They've got a 99.9999% uptime since 2011. They collectively have over 80 servers and over three quarters of a million hours of operation since they were put up and not a single server failure. So we're very proud of those statistics and that this is one of the, the questions we get, how reliable is it? I guarantee you it's about 10 times more reliable than what you have on premises. We see Authority Cloud as the future, but we're also very much committed to our on-premises solution for those of our clients who are not ready or able to move to Authority Cloud. And we have some of those that, uh, that for various reasons cannot. We're poised and we're ready to start the next stage of our journey. You know, we've built a very powerful component authoring platform. It's used by thousands of organizations in over 50 countries with tens of thousands of users delivering a multitude of content solutions. We have people doing from high-tech manufacturing and software through to machine building, through to heavy industry, banking, finance, aviation, and life sciences. A huge spread of clients. We've assembled a world-class management team that's going to help lead us into the future. Most of those are in the room today, and you'll be speaking to those as you walk around and talk to people at the conference. We have a strong, driven, smart, dedicated staff committed to bringing success to you and to our clients. And we're just in the process of closing a round of funding with our new investors, Movac, who are also in the room today, that will fund our next stage of growth. We're ready to accelerate. So over the next few years, you're going to be part of some of the most exciting and innovative changes in our industry as we realize uh, our vision. A vision of creating a component-based content lifecycle where there's no documents, where components flow seamlessly through the entire content lifecycle from inception to authoring, review, translation, publishing, delivery to clients, and even getting user feedback and contribution. Now, a full suite of modern, intuitive web-based and mobile applications that will take component authoring to the next level and will make it available to anyone, anywhere, extending the work we've already begun with our review and localized modules. A platform that easily integrates through formal and powerful APIs and plugins and that allows our clients and our partners to easily extend author it with any capability or any output imaginable and connect author it with other systems for sharing content. Create a strong and vibrant community for our clients that provides ongoing support and education focused on helping you all achieve success with our technologies. And for ultimately we see our success lies with your success. And throughout the rest of today you're all going to hear from some of our clients, our partners, our team and see firsthand this vision in action. In the last session that Steve highlighted, you're even going to get to contribute to um, an exciting new project that we're putting together, which we're trying to bring metrics into content authoring. Be able to measure and see trends and analytics around all of the authoring systems. So that's going to be an exciting lesson. So welcome again to all of you to our first Author at Summit, I'm really excited about the future we're going to build together, so thank you very much.